Hey guys, and Hatchfish here. Before I touch on anything else, I want to get off the top of my head first. So this is going to be the first episode in something that it's going to become a weekly series. It's going to be aimed for every Friday, probably late afternoon, early evenings, basically whenever I have time to upload it Friday. And it's, uh, I don't have a name for it yet. Real Talk Fridays? Good Talks? I don't know. It's basically going to be me talking over Call of Duty gameplay because, one, I don't have enough Call of Duty gameplay up, and I never thought I'd actually say that. Uh, I got a little disinterested in the game, but nonetheless, it is one of the more popular things I've been putting up. So, and I don't dislike the game at all, so <laughs> basically it's going to be me talking over Call of Duty clip, talking about uh, channel updates, things in the week that uh, interest me, gaming news, news. I actually have a little bit of an insider view because of my program. And I can talk about things from a little bit of a different perspective because I've in, been in design and programming courses. So basically gaming stuff I talk about is going to be uh, hopefully a little bit different from the average conversation, but generally the same. So I just destroyed everything I just said, but it, uh, take from that what you will. This is a pretty good gameplay. It's Wii U Pro Controller. Uh, switch the MP7 sounds to here. As you can see, it's something like 40 to 13, and my team still loses by like 2, so... It's a little disappointing, but nonetheless, it's fun. And uh, something I wanted to talk about this week uh, is, first of all, if any of you have an idea for a name, uh, shoot it. Uh, what I want to do with this is I want it to be uh, influenced by comments, questions, uh, as, as this channel grows and stuff. So it's basically just a way for me to keep in touch with people more directly because I do read all the comments but sometimes I honestly forget to go back and answer them because on my phone I can't do at replies so it's a little messy with that. So I have to remember to go on my computer when I get home and often I forget. So I actually did get asked a question this week, it's not related to this because this didn't happen yet, but <laughs> I got asked what my PlayStation name is and it was a little surprising but my name is The Hatchet Fish. And, um, honestly, I'm not really adding people on right now. I want to keep it mostly for people I know in real life. If there's actually an interest of people wanting to play, then I will gladly make another account so I can keep it separated so I don't get lost in the friends list. And I will use that shit a lot if people are interested. And, next thing I wanted to talk about is, I don't know how many of you knew, but a while ago... I guess it was quite a while ago now. There was a Kickstarter for, uh, run by, I'm gonna say her name wrong, I think. Anita Sar- Anita Sarkeesian? Sarkeesian? Uh, sorry if I said that wrong, if anyone's offended. But, she did a Kickstarter to examine tropes against women in video games. And her first video came out either today or yesterday. I guess I'm recording this Thursday. So whatever, it came out. First video came out. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description so you can go watch it. It's pretty long. It's about half an hour. I've watched the whole thing. It's the kind of thing that interests me. And uh, she talks about how women are portrayed in video games. This is part one, obviously. It's not all of it. And she talks about the damsel in distress trope and how often it's used. And it is used often if you think about it. I'm just looking at my games in the wall right now and actually none of them really match that description <laughs> but um, deal with it because it does happen a lot every Mario game Zelda games touch on it a bit not as much as Mario because Zelda helps out kill. Princess Peach doesn't and killer drone deployed. Uh, it's actually really annoying me right now because as, as I look at my games I'm not actually seeing it while in my head when watching it, I was like yeah I guess it does happen a lot and it does but not in the ones I have sitting in front of me I digress basically um, Women are often portrayed as helpless. Uh, the protagonists are often men, and that is true. Protagonists are often men who overcome challenges like getting imprisoned. And the women are often people who get imprisoned and do not overcome that challenge. So, um, I don't know, it's a little bit of a touchy subject now. It didn't used to be, and honestly, I think it's a little bit stupid. Uh, it's a game. Now, while I will say there aren't actually enough games with female protagonists, and they often don't sell as well as others, and I guess there's probably some people who are like, oh, it's a woman protagonist. No, uh, I guess that exists. 
But uh, for the most part, I honestly think they don't sell as well because they're just they're not the big games. Anything that's not Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, you know, a big name game will not sell as well. And most of the female protagonist games are start-up games. Mirror's Edge, that was a new IP. New IPs will not sell that great the first time around, odds are, unless it really kicks off. And I thought that did pretty well. It is EA. I don't like EA, but that's besides the point. Um, what other games are there? There's a new one coming out, too, in June. Remember Me? Uh, it's got a female protagonist. Obviously sexed up a little bit. Um, that's more culture than just games specifically, but it is in games, and you'll find most of them are. My most famous example, I guess, would be Samus. She's a woman. She's strong and empowered, and she kicks ass. And then in Other M, they took that away. Uh, I don't know how many of you played Other M. It was an okay game, but it's uh, basically Samus having all these super powerful things, and all the other games, she's like, fuck it, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to save the world, universe even. And in Other M, there's this guy called Adam. And all of a sudden, uh, she can't do anything without Adam's permission. And that gets looked at in a very sexist way, and I guess it kind of is. But at the same time, really? <laughs> it's a little disappointing that it happened, but I just looked at that from a gameplay perspective as being absolutely stupid, let alone any, you know, social culture repercussions. It was just absolutely stupid. But I digress once again. Basically I'm saying go watch it. It's a good watch if you're interested in game design and the culture of it. And um, yeah, I'm not really going to touch on my opinions on it too much because I think uh, she made some good points and some uh, rather stupid ones like the Star Fox. The very first one I believe. Um, it was a game developed by Rare with Star Fox Adventures. It used to be Dinosaur Planet. It's a very famous uh, situation where Rare was making a game and Shigeru Miyamoto, I believe, I think I got the right guy in my head here, uh, was kind of just like, hey, we need a new Star Fox game. Their character was already a uh, animal creature. It was, I guess it was like a purple fox. And then they revamped it over a little course of time, and it became a Star Fox game, and the main character, who used to be a female fox, was now more of the objective and it just basically comes down to how a game is going to motivate someone, and it's the lazy way out. Because you'll find in every game there has to be a motivation for a player to play it for the most time. Even, you know, as pure of a platformer as uh, Epic Meat Boy, <laughs> Epic Meat, Meat Boy is, is uh, the motivation is still his girlfriend got captured, and basically it all comes down to that like there has to be some motivation it's either the girl the world's ending uh dom's wife <laughs> just a million things and it's whatever the writers choose and often it's a bit of a touchy subject and it's kind of the lazy way out just like a deus ex machina is now, not the game if any of you get that confused a deus ex machina is a writing thing where they build in a random fail safe into a story because they've put themselves in a corner uh, an example I saw actually last night was Cabin in the Woods. Randomly, the purge button appears. I'm not spoiling anything with that. If you watch it, um, you'll understand. Basically, they were fucked, and they're like, well, how are we going to get the movie going? And then that's it. It's just like the pure chance. I know I've run over the video. I might put a picture here. I'm rounding it out now, so don't worry. But, uh, yeah, that was a little more of a serious talk than I would have on most. Uh, probably a little rambly, too. A couple movies I want to suggest really quick because I wanted to talk about them were uh, Cabin in the Woods and the Boondock Saints. Cabin in the Woods is funny. It's not a horror movie, really. And Boondock Saints is either my first or second favorite movie of all time. It's just great. It's a good St. Penny's Day movie if you're into that, too. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you next week with another version of this and suggest those titles and ask questions if you want. Uh, see ya.